Hi student, today I am going to demonstrate a case study that I developed on uh, the arch model autoregressive conditional heteroscedastic model in R and I will take a real life data and first things that I will show you how to you know identify the appropriate model based on AIC, uh, ACF and PACF functions from and the final selection definitely would be based on the AIC and after selection that will feed the ARMA or you know ARMA model and then from there the residual would be extracted and based on the residual we will see whether any evidence of volatility exists in the data or not. If exist then we will try to fit appropriate arch model and there also we will uh, try to explore the uh, order of arch model by graphically ACF and PACF functions and finally, the AIC based you know selection criteria would be used to select the appropriate arch model. So, uh, let us focus on the data, the data that I uh, took is the beast 100 index USD based from year 1988 to 2013 taken from the wave and here mainly the interest of the data I just displayed a, a header of the data. So, this is the uh, variable of my interest that I use to demonstrate the uh, arch model analysis. So, these two variables are of our interest and the whole data uh, was entered in a excel sheet and that excel file name was in xu 100csv So, first thing that we have to do as you know that need to be you know import in R console the data the CSV is most easiest way to import the data. So, if you just uh, import the data and store in a object called data then you know you can easily access all the columns that are there, but our main interest is the USD based uh, based 100 index. So, before we go to the analysis we really need to uh, explore the through the exploration exploratory analysis about the possible choice of the models. So, here you know first things that I will do here and ACF plot that can be done by ACF function which is available in R. So, and I use the log uh, of the index I mean log return. So, the maximum log uh, lag dot max I set to be I set to 150 and that will give you the plot looks like this. If you just observe the autocorrelation over the lags you will see you know it is gradually decreasing, but actually it is not diminishing. So, I mean when you get this kind of you know ACA plots then that indicates you that you know you better can take the difference of lag I mean differencing is very much needed here to tackle this kind of data. So, as, uh, as I mentioned the ACF is slowly decreasing, but it is not drying down. So, we can do the I mean, 1 lag difference. So, that to get this you know there is a function called DIF div. So, just the log USD based that log variable can be passed through div within the same function ACF and I said the lag maximum is 115 uh, and then the ACF plot would look like this. If you see just I took one uh, lag difference that itself reduced the autocorrelation uh, values. It is if you see here only you know, is here that it is actually lag 1, lag 1 showing significant others are there, but it is they are not beyond the confidence limit. So, the significant lines so only lag 1 uh, is appropriate for this difference that is the moving average order and then I will uh, look for the air component. And there, you know, I use the partial autocorrelation function. That partial autocorrelation function can be, you know, drawn by a PACF function, where the same way you can in include the variable log variable 
and maximum lag I said to 15 and then you will get a plot something like this where if you observe you know that it, it seems that you know uh, log 1 uh, and I mean two, two lags are actually exceeding the insignificant line. So, possibly one or two lags might be appropriate for air structure. So, I mean till two lags and then PSCF cuts off. So, as I mentioned. So, next we will also explore the PSCF for the differencing data. So, it is just one lakh difference that was taken and same way the way we did for ACF just diff function can be used and the log series can be passed through diff function and lag max was set to 15 and then you will see the plots something like this you will see here you know I mean lag 2 is showing I mean others are going here and there. but significantly you know we can see the lag to might be the uh, quite possible choice for air structure. So, then you know we will uh, move to I mean considering a model called you know ARIMA. So, we will we'll take the ARIMA model selection. So, as a whole if you see that model selection uh, all it is together I mean just combine all the plots together then you can easily guess that it is there is a moving average component there is a air component and there is a differencing component. So, it is actually auto regressive integrated moving average model. So, that uh, the, the order of the model can be confirmed by AIC. So, we will first try or uh, I mean different choices of for different choices of ARIMA orders we will calculate the AIC and then we will compare the AIC and choose the appropriate order for ARIMA. So, the ARIMA is a function uh, that can be used. So, log the uh, log variable would be passed through ARIMA and order can be mentioned as I start with 0 1 0 and dollar AIC. So, the whole thing if I use dollar then that will give you the AIC values. Similarly, if we change the order from 0 1 0 to 1 1 0, then 0 1 1, then 1 1 1, then 0 1 2, uh, then 2 1 0, 2 1 1 and 2 1 2. And if I just summarize all, it looks like the, the most uh, smallest I mean the least AIC that was observed for 212. So, we can select the ARIMA order as 212 uh, based on the AIC that is the lowest AIC. So, now we will feed the ARIMA 212 as I told ARIMA is the function. So, I fit uh, fitted the ARIMA model same way that was uh, done for calculating the AIC. So, ARIMA log data dollar USP dot based and order is equals to 2, 1 and 2 that is named as ARIMA 1, 2 I told and if you just want to display just type ARIMA 2, 1, 2 that will give you the results of uh, ARIMA that is AR, 2 AR component and 2 moving average component and that uh, sigma square also is given. And finally, the model that uh, we will get from this fitting is y t minus y t minus 1 equals to minus 0 0.95 into y t minus 1 minus y t minus 2 minus 0 0.192 into y t minus 2 minus y t minus 3 plus 0 0.660 that is the moving average uh, coefficient epsilon t minus 1 plus second moving average coefficient was 0 0.263. So, 0 0.264 epsilon t minus 2 plus epsilon t. So, that is the ARIMA model that was fitted. So, next objective is to extract the um, residual from it because there we will see the uh, evidence of volatility. So, let us you know look for the evidence of volatility in the residual series. To get the residual we can 
just uh, that arima object arima 212 object that i created so arima object dollar race if i write that will provide you the residual of that particular model so that residual was stored in our race dot arima 212 and then finally the square residual uh, was derived by just squaring the residual series and we just plotted the residual if we plot the residual just square dot raised dot residual then square residual is a pass through the plot function and that will give you the plots looks like this if you see the plots then clearly you can find several clusters uh, there you know the the mean square residual plot shows some clusters of volatility at some points of time you know especially here these are the three locations are quite prominent clusters that cluster indicating the uh, heteroscedasticity in the variance so variance is not constant of the residual variance is not constant that is a strong evidence of the volatility so we should take care of the volatility by the alternative models so here the i'll feed the arch model to address this volatility here so acf and phcf of the residual square residual will help out to identify the order of arc model so for that here you know i wanted to plot both acf and phcf together in a uh, in a plot so for that you know i use the function called pair where mf row equals to c1 comma 2 that means you know it would be one row but two columns and two plots one plot would be the left panel another plot would be the right panel and this way you can this particular function will create this acf and phcf function of the square residuals and again i said to one one uh, structure of the plot so that is uh, m mf row pair mf row c equals to 1 1 and this is the pcf acf and pcf of the square residuals and then you know if just use the function called uh, use the package that uh, in r is the tca a tsa the tsa function will be used here to you know fit the r model so uh, first things that we have to do we have to choose the appropriate order for the arch model uh, based on the aic because from the plots it was not clear what would be the exact is giving some instruction but uh, it's not clear what would be the exact order of the arch model so that can be done only through aic so for that you know we can calculate the aic i just developed a very simple function here my aic Where if you see this function, the feet Q and D can be provided, and that function will calculate the AIC, and then I uh, and for the zero zero order, in, uh, for zero zero order, you, that function cannot provide the AIC. So for that, I calculated separately for AIC zero zero um, by this uh, by the above formula. and then i use the my aic function all the time to generate the aic for other orders so for 01 02 03 04 and then uh, to we mean up to 010 that i explore uh, for aic so 010 11 and then Uh, the arch chain was found to be uh, most significant uh, i mean appropriate the arch chain data was uh, if you see the previous one where the arch chain is showing minus 57 uh, 1055.59 uh, which is the lowest uh, among all that was explored so chain was considered to be the choice of arch order and to generate the arch uh, output i use the function gauge g a r c gauge uh, that is available in tsa package 
um, that just pass the residual of uh, arima 212 and then order 0 to uh, 0 comma 10 so first the 0 for the guard component but here i set the guard component 0 and arch component is 10 and trace equals to falseness i don't want to see the intermittent steps that normally it shows i that will directly say show you the summary instead of the step by step uh, iterations the summary can be generated just by summary function of the same arch object and that will generate uh, that will generate the arch uh, 10 or a 10 module model and that you know you will see here the coefficients from 10 uh, 11 coefficients including the uh, a naught and here is the uh, p value and also there is a, some diagnostics test that also available that is jarker bear test and that all are uh, this is also significant and l young test of the square residuals is indicating it is not significant that means there is no further evidence of autocorrelations in the residual so that has been taken care by this arch model so that's all about the arch model from this model that we have seen how to you know select the appropriate order for a arima model and then from there how to extract the residual from this model and finally to see the evidence of volatility and if it exists how to you know identify the appropriate arch model uh, for that particular uh, to address that volatility and here by the uh, the particular package called TSA that we used and the guards is the function that we used where we mentioned the order as 0 uh, and the 0 and P. So, that indicates it is the arch model I hopefully after you know completion of this module you know you would be able to uh, I mean understand how the arch model need to be analyzed in R.